Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another coding tutorial video. Today, we take a look at functions. Uh, and along with functions, we're gonna take a look at Turtle, which is a really cool way to show off functions uh, in a simplistic manner. So, I suppose the best question to ask at the beginning is, what is a function? Well, a function is a block of reusable code that allows us to call it and do things. Now you may have remembered in the first video we talked about a couple of functions actually inherently such as print. Print is a function. Uh, it's just a function that is built into uh, Python which means that we can use it wherever we want. Now I can make my own functions which is what we're going to do today. You know it might not be something as complex as printing uh, but it might be something that we can utilize uh, to do things. So why would you use functions? Uh, what is the point of making functions in your code? We, we can just, you know, have a big laundry list of uh, variables here and then start to do, you know, random operations and then we can print out, you know, X and then we can print out V and then, you know, maybe later on in our code, some hundred lines later, we're going to we're going to print out X again uh, and we're going to see what X is again. Why would you have all of these lines of code to do something so similar? You want to reuse your code. You want to make your code more readable. Uh, in, a, in a corporate environment, when you're going to be writing code, you want to make sure that the people that are with you can understand what you coded. Uh, so that is why we use functions for two things. Readability and, pardon me, readability and reusability. These are kind of the big two reasons as to why we use functions. So I'm not going to leave you hanging. We're going to hop in and we're going to make some functions here. How do we make a function? Well, we have to define the function. Uh, and we can do that by just simply typing def. Uh, def means define. Uh, we can then call our function whatever we want to call it. So I could call this function uh, my function. Very, very lame name for a function, uh, but that's okay. You then will give it parameters, uh, and these are going to be things that we pass into our function. But right now, I'm just going to not pass anything into our function. And you, you kind of understand this with the print as well, it, it parameters. So print, on its own, you know, this will print. This is a valid thing, but we provide it parameters. You know, we can provide it the parameter of hello, uh, and then it will print hello. We could provide it the parameter of x uh, as a variable as long as we have x defined here and it will print out that variable. It works the same for our functions. So we'll we'll pass things in to our functions and they will do things. But for right now, uh, I'm just going to leave this empty as a demonstration. Uh, and then you just have to follow it up with a little colon right there. So we've officially defined our function. There's nothing inside of it. Uh, this function won't do anything, uh, but we, we defined it, so that's good. Inside of our function, I'm just gonna make a simple statement that says print hello world, okay? Now you may be looking at this and you may be going, okay, uh, I'm a little bit confused here. Now, Tyler, you have this function, my function, uh, and then you indented in and you have print hello world. Now, isn't the code just going to go down the line and it's going to define the function and then it's gonna print hello world? Well, you know what? This is a good time for us to test that. Let's run this and see what happens. So we ran it and I can actually just run the file in console and we'll see here. Well, it works the exact same way, I suppose. But uh, it did not do that at all. Um, we don't see anything here that, that says anything about hello world because we never called this function. So in Python, uh, white space is important. And every time you have a function, uh, you have a conditional such as an if statement, uh, you have a loop, which we'll get to in a future episode. You have to indent uh, to kind of tell Python that yes, this print hello world is inside of this function. Now we can continue to do something along the lines of print hello world out here. And keep in mind, this is lowercase h, this is capital H, so we have the distinction. Uh, we can run this now, and you will see uh, that this gives us hello world with the lowercase because it's outside of this indented block. But if we were to put it into the indented block and run this, you're going to see absolutely not. We got nothing in there uh, because it's just simply not being called. Our, our my function function uh, is not being called. So how do we call that function? Uh, pretty easy, and we're going to do it right now. 
uh, we can come down here out of our function and we can just say uh, my function pretty easy and it's going to know that oh my function well you define that I'm going to jump up to here uh, and then we're going to do whatever's in this function so we're going to print hello world and then we're going to print hello world and it's going to be two different hello worlds but you kind of understand so there's there's the first one with capital H there's the second one with the lowercase h so you may be still going hey Tyler why like, like what's the point in us doing this here well Obviously, this is not going to be the only function you make. This is a function known as a void function, uh, and this is properly defined in other languages, but in Python, you don't have to actually tell it it's a void function. Uh, this is a function that doesn't return anything. It just does something. Uh, we're going to have functions that return stuff, and, and that allows us to manipulate variables that we pass around in our code. So let's, let's make uh, a new function here, and we're going to call it... Uh, cookie eater all right and then we're going to define a variable uh, that is cookies uh, and we're going to have a hundred cookies at the beginning okay now i actually want to it's good coding practice to always uh define your variables underneath your functions so we're going to define cookies down here and we're getting a little bit of an error because it doesn't like that there's nothing in our function uh, if you want to continue to code things down here without filling in your function you can just type pass for the time being uh, and python will know that okay you're, you're just going to chill on that function for a little bit so right now nothing's going to run i mean we, we, we don't have anything here to run it's just a very basic uh very basic variable definition nothing too too complex there um but let's let's do some things with cookie eater now so cookie eater we're going to pass in a variable uh, and we're going to pass in the variable of cookies now i could pass in this as anything you know i could pass this in as x i could pass this in as cookies to eat i could pass this in as cookie monsters snack I could pass this in as anything uh, is kind of the point that I'm getting at. So let's pass it in as something that isn't the same variable name. Let's, let's pass it in as X uh, just for the sake of the demonstration. So now we have cookies equals 100. You know, we'll kind of bring that up a couple lines. And then let's call cookie eater. Okay. Cookie eater. And we're going to pass in our variable cookies because we want to send our 100 cookies into cookie eater. Now, when we do this, when this function is called right here, it's going to send our variable cookies up into cookie eater. But since we provided it as the parameter X, it's going to think that this is X for the time being. A little bit complicated, but not too, too bad. We can then come in here and we can print out X. Uh, and this will just prove that this is doing exactly what we want it to because X should be a hundred because we're passing in uh, cookies, which is a hundred. So let's run this just so that you can see here. Uh, and you will see that it has indeed printed out a hundred as our beautiful function here. But obviously this is a cookie eater function. We, we don't want to just print out the number of cookies. We want to subtract some cookies. Uh, so we want to do X is equal to x minus one we want to eat a cookie every time that cookie eater is sent in here so we can say uh x equals x plus one or x minus one and then we can print out x uh, and we will see that this does exactly as you would expect it's going to subtract one from our cookies we now have 99 cookies but then let's do something interesting okay uh let's come down here and let's now print cookies okay so we have inside of our function, we pass in cookies. It comes in as X. We subtract one from X and then we print out X. Well, X is still cookies, sort of, right now. Uh, at least that's what we think it is. So when we print cookies down here, we would expect this to have given us 99 because we subtracted one. Well, let's see what happens. We're going to print and you will see that we have 99. But where the heck did the other cookie come from, man? Did, did we throw up the cookie? No, we did not throw up the cookie. Uh, we did not actually change this cookies variable. We passed in a reference to this cookies variable. So we sent it in. We said, yeah, 
X is going to be equal to this cookies thing, but it's not actually cookies. It's just kind of a reference to cookies right now. So take that reference, subtract one from that reference, and then just print out that reference. But we don't return anything. We don't tell the initial cookies that anything has changed. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that. Let's return X. And this is going to return X to this function. Now you may be going, okay, I, I got that. Let's do it. Uh, we're now going to have 99 cookies. Wrong again, buddy. Wrong again. Uh, you got 99 and you got 100 because we don't do anything with the return here. We have to set that return equal to something. So let's set a new variable down here that is cookies have been eaten. It's a long variable name. But we're going to set cookies have been eaten equal to cookie eater. And now we can print out both of these. So we got cookies and cookies have been eaten. We should see that cookies is equal to 100. Cookies have been eaten is equal to our function that passes in cookies. It reads cookies as x. It does x equals x minus 1. It's going to print that out. That should be 99. Then we're going to return 99 to cookies have been eaten. So now cookies have been eaten is equal to 99. We're going to print the initial cookies, which hasn't changed. We just passed a reference to it. It's going to be 100, and cookies have been eaten is going to be 99. We can run this, and we will see 99, 100, 99. It's freaking magic, dude. It's good stuff. Uh, now, you may be going, okay, Tyler, I understand. Why did we want to have a function for cookie eater? Why couldn't we have just done you know, something along the lines of this? Cookies minus equal one. And we move on with our day. You know, this is literally the exact same thing as what we have as the cookie eater. Well, here's the reason. Maybe throughout your code, you want to every five minutes have a cookie be eaten. You know, are you going to continue to copy and paste this line of code over and over again? What's the point when instead you could just call cookie eater? Pretty straightforward. Uh, so we could actually, you know, set up a loop here that just says, you know, for I in range 10, uh, come here and cookie eater of cookies. And we'll set, you know, this equal to cookies equals cookie eater of cookies. And then all of a sudden you're going to see that as we run this, we're going to be subtracting way more cookies. And I know that you don't understand loops quite yet. Uh, we're going to get into that, but this is, you know, two lines instead of having to take this line and use it over and over and over and over and over. So there's a benefit to having these functions uh, and definitely it speeds up your code and makes your code much more readable because now, you know, whoever's reading this goes, okay, cookie eater. Seems pretty straightforward. It's going to eat a cookie, you know? So that is a basic function here. It may have been a little bit confusing. Uh, I do have one more little example to kind of show you what happens internally uh, if we were to do some stuff here. So let's say that we don't return X. This, this makes us back into a void function. But we're going to set cookies have been eaten still equal to cookie eater uh, passing in cookies. So if we don't return anything from this function, what does this variable turn into? Because clearly it shouldn't turn into X because we don't return X from this function. We don't return anything from this function. Uh, so let's, let's figure this out. Let's print out cookies have been eaten. Okay. And let's, let's run this and we will see that we print out 99 because that is a hundred minus one. And then we just get none. Python goes, I have no idea what you are trying to do. Uh, so please don't do that. You, you just get none back from your function. Now, obviously, if we come back here and we say return X, uh, then this is going to go back to normal uh, and we will see that this is 99.99. So that's kind of our initial uh, bit of functions. Let's do some fun with something called turtle. OK, let's do something with turtle. So how do we access turtle? Well, we're going to have to import the turtle module. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about modules in a future video, but it should be as easy as us typing in import turtle, which is the name of the module. Then we can do some calls with turtle. So we're going to make a turtle. Uh, we're going to call it T uh, and we're going to do that by doing this. We're going to make a turtle and this is a function uh, turtle that creates a turtle. You may be going, Tyler, what are you talking about? 
what is a turtle? Well, I'm going to show you, so don't worry. So now T is equal to this turtle that we're pulling from this turtle module. Uh, what can we do with this turtle? We can move the turtle. That's right. We can move the turtle. So we can say T dot forward, uh, and we're going to move that turtle forward a hundred. Okay. And then we're going to tell the turtle, uh, we are done and we're just going to call turtle dot done. Uh, and this is going to call the module and it's going to tell us, yeah, we're, we're done here. Uh, we don't want to add anything else to our turtle. So what does this do when we run it? This is kind of the moment of truth and this is the fun part. So we can run this and we will see that a turtle pops up and it has moved forward a hundred It moved forward a hundred. It started here and then it moved forward a hundred. Now we, we can make some changes here. We can make some changes. We can say, uh, let's move turtle dot forward 200. Okay. Let's run this and we will see that our turtle, when I come and delete this one, our turtle has moved further along his line. Uh, we can do turtle dot forward of 300 run this. He's going to move even further across the line. Uh, we can turn the turtle. So let's say we wanted to turn the turtle. We can say T dot uh, left. This is going to turn him left uh, at an angle of 90. And then we're going to go forward another 300. So what is this going to do? Going to do exactly as you think. It's going to turn our turtle. He's going to turn. He's going to go up now. Uh, and you may be going, okay, I understand. I understand. How about we make a square? Uh, well, how about we make a square? Let's just reuse this code. Uh, and let's say T dot left forward, T dot left forward. Uh, and then T dot left should put him back in the initial starting position that he was in. So we can do this. We can run it and we will see he's going to go and he's going to make a nice little square. Now you might already get uh, what I'm getting at here. We made a square in turtle. Sure. And it took us 11 lines to do it. Uh, that's fair. Not the end of the world. But we're just repeating the same code over and over. Why not make a function for that? So let's make a function. Let's, let's define our function. We're going to call it square. Uh, and we're going to pass in our turtle into our function. Okay. Uh, and in our function, we're going to just tell the turtle to go forward. 300 and then t dot left 90 okay now we can then come down here and we can say okay t equals turtle dot turtle uh and then just square of t and then square of t and then square of t not sure if you heard of the idea of going in a square uh, but we're going to go in a square of t let's do one more square of t and now let's run this and we're going to see that uh, he still builds his square because we're just doing the same code, but repeating it a little bit. Now we could get even more weird uh, and we can say something along the lines of calling square of T inside of our square of T function. What the heck is this going to do? Well, we're going to put ourselves into an infinite loop of calling the same thing over and over and over again. And Turtle's just going to go, I have no idea what you're doing. Python is crashing on my computer. Um, don't do something like that unless you know what you're doing. And you're going to see here that it says maximum recursion depth exceeded. Uh, this is a little bit of a spoiler. We're going to be talking about recursion and we're going to be using Turtle uh, in that recursion in a future episode. Uh, recursion is the idea of calling a function inside of a function uh, to do something a lot of times to iterate. Uh, we can iterate with loops or we can iterate with recursion. So we defined a square. Uh, let's do something a little bit even more interesting. Uh, let's try to make like a, I don't know. Um, let's try to make a weird square that uh, concentric squares. Let's, let's try to make concentric squares. So let's define square. Uh, and let's define how big the lines are going to be inside of square. So we're going to make that X. Okay. And we're going to come in here and we're going to go T dot forward X. We're going to pass in T and X and we're going to say T dot forward X, uh, and T dot left 90 can stay. Now then down here, uh, let's 
let's do things a little bit differently and let's actually make our entire square inside of here i know you're going tyler didn't you say uh not to do this i did say not to do this but it's going to work okay for us because this time we're going to be making multiple squares uh so instead of having just a ton of square down here we'll just have the function make the entire square you know if we wanted to have other shapes we could have define hexagon uh define octagon uh doesn't really matter here so let's pass in uh some new things let's go 400 this is going to make a square that is 400 big then let's go 300 it's going to make a square that's 300 big then we can go uh 200 pretty straightforward uh and then we can go five i'm just kidding we're going to go 100 you thought i was going to say uh thought i was going to say 100 there and then we can go 50 uh, and this is probably going to be interesting enough for us to see. So to me right now, and I haven't tested it yet, so maybe I am just totally wrong, but this should make a square and then it should come back and it's going to make a smaller square inside that square. And then it's going to make a smaller square and then it's going to make an even smaller square and then an even smaller square. Uh, so let's see what happens. Let, let's run our turtle and let's see how he's doing. Big square, little square, littler square even smaller square, even smaller square. So we can make uh, these kinds of cool art designs uh, with Turtle. And there's there's all kinds of funky designs that you can make out there uh, just by running Turtle in here. And that's just the beauty of passing in uh, a different length for our lines every single time. Now we can get really weird. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm down to get really weird with this. Let's make some random numbers to pass in here. So let's import random into our uh, thing here. And this is another module in Python that allows us to grab, uh, I believe, not cryptographically secure random number generators, but still random number generators. If you don't know what that means, don't worry too, too much about it. Let's make uh, a few random numbers here. So we'll, we'll make R1 is one random number and we will say random.randint. Uh, and that's going to make ourselves a random integer. We can also say R1 or R2 is equal to random.randint. We can say that's rant int. Do not make spelling mistakes. They will ruin your life in coding. Uh, R3 is equal to random dot rand int. And then finally, let's go R4 is equal to random dot rand int. So now we can come over here and we can say, uh, let's pass in R1 into this one. Let's pass in R2 into this guy r3 into this guy and r4 into this guy and then maybe we'll go back to r1 at the end just to see what happens uh so we don't know what this is going to look like uh i we'll see i suppose oh it's missing arguments in rand int let's give it uh, a random integer between 0 and 500 okay actually 0 and 400 because 400 was just off the screen so random integers between 0 and 400 uh this could be any number between 0 and 400 my bad. Definitely should have had that one, right? Uh, missing white space. Yeah, okay. You don't need the white space, but it, it likes it. So let's run this, and we will see. Uh, oh, you, you, you missed it because it was on the other turtle screen. Here we go. Running it, and let's do some random boxes. So it's, it's making random ones. Believe it or not, it ended up actually looking relatively normal. <laughs> In the end, uh, I suppose we're still just making squares, so that makes sense. What we could do to get really just whacked up and weird, let, let's go uh, random integers between 0 and 100 here, but then let's make it turn an angle of X as well. So now instead of always doing 90 degree angles, let's go whatever the random integer is. And this is just going to make a mess on the screen, frankly. Uh, I'm excited for it. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, it has made some random, random things. Uh, we could even do this continually, and it's going to continue to just make some weird stuff. So let's, let's kind of do this over and over and over again. This is now like 65 lines of making random squares at random angles. Uh, and here we go. It's, it's, it's terrible. 
It's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just my computer scribbling. Oh, you can't see it. One second. This is how you know I'm bad at this. Uh, it's just my computer scribbling randomly. And it's going to do this uh, for a while. Not pretty in the slightest. You can definitely make some prettier stuff uh, with this. Right now, it's just, it's just white noise on a computer screen, my dude. White noise made with Python. Uh, it's just going to continue to make its, its squares over and over. There is actually like a pattern here. It's moving in a circle, which is the weirdest thing ever. Uh, there has to be some kind of strange strange algorithm that we've now created where this makes sense. It, it makes you wonder if, if we continue to let this go around forever. Uh, what would happen? So now, I mean, you have my you have my curiosity. I'm sure you guys are also curious. Let's let's see. Let's just uh, let's just copy this another 400 times, give or take. But this time we're gonna set the turtle speed a little bit, uh, and we're gonna tell the turtle, hey, you're gonna go t dot speed of one, which is gonna make this boy go nice and quick. Uh, and we have a couple of botched up areas inside of here where it thinks that it's trying to call a function on the same function. This is the beauty of a software like PyCharm. Uh, I know you cannot see this on the current screen right now, but it's telling me where all these errors are so I can just quickly move to them uh, and fix them. So now we can run this uh, and, and the turtle's going to move nice and... Oh no, he's going super slow. I forgot. Zero is crazy fast uh, and, and one is pretty slow so let, let's change this bad boy to zero and this should go real speedy yeah there we go okay so it appears that our pattern just absolutely was not something before uh and instead we we've just created an animal <laughs> it's a black hole dude uh not necessarily what we're what we're looking for but it's cool you know that's turtle um and i'm sure you can make some really cool stuff with this i implore you to hop in mess with turtle there's a lot you can do with it obviously forward and left are not the only two things you can do uh, you can also turn uh right as well uh t dot right is a thing you can go t dot back uh for backward and there's a lot of other things you can do such as change the line color uh, in turtle you can change obviously the speed that things going it's kind of funny actually this has stayed in a relatively simple area i suppose it's actually only it can only go a hundred uh but pretty cool as a whole that's gonna do it for today's episode it was a little bit of a more complicated video i expect there to be way more questions uh feel free to share your turtle creations in my discord uh that link is in the description down below we have a tech and code chat where people always chat about various things going on uh in the coding world so come check it out uh come post your turtle creations i'd love to see some stuff that you guys are coding um but any questions once again leave them in the comments because i will be going through pulling those comments out and then doing a video sometime next week that will talk about those questions and i'll give you some answers on some things and hopefully clear th some things up if you don't quite understand what we did in this video thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed i'll see you in the next one you have a good day goodbye <laughs>